When a scientist does an experiment, a key part of that experiment is sharing your results. We scientists are sometimes quite lazy and we don't always want to sit down and read through just an essay of analytical data. But we will do it! We like to show our information visually. I had a calculus teacher who once said something to the effect of, in math, a graph is a picture and a picture's worth a thousand words. Unless you're being blackmailed, then a picture's worth a thousand grand. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Cheesy joke, but people like cheese. A graph can also be called a chart or a plot. It all means the same thing. It's just a visual way to represent data. Sometimes data can be hard to figure out or interpret. So graphs help us visualize that data. They help us make sense of a bunch of random numbers. To keep track of data during an experiment, often scientists will use a data table like this one. In the experiment that bought that data table, I had three people who took a stick of gum from the same brand, same pack, got the mass of the gum, chewed it for 30 seconds, got the mass again, chewed it for 30 more seconds, got the mass again, over and over again for 180 seconds. Then I took the average and created the data table. What I changed was the independent variable, the amount of time the gum was chewed. What I observed was the dependent variable, that was the mass of the gum. In science, you collect data and then you use that data to figure out what kind of graph you want to make. The main kinds of graphs are line graphs, scatter plot, histogram, bar graphs, and pie charts, or pie graphs. A line graph is when you have dots connected in a line. That's amazing! It shows change over time. Time is always on the x-axis. A scatter plot is going to show a correlation of variables or a correlation of number sets. You do not connect the dots in your scatter plot. You do a best fit line that shows the average of your data. A bar graph shows different groups and there is space between the bars. A histogram shows distribution of data and the bars touch. A pie graph shows percentages or parts of a whole. Looking at the gum experiment I mentioned earlier, that's change over time. It was time chewing and I observed the change that happened over that time. A line graph would be the best graph in this situation. A common acronym in science that we use is dry mix. D-R-Y-M-I-X. Dry is dependent responding y-axis. So your dependent variable, which was what you observe from something else changing, so it's responding to some change, and it's on the y-axis. Mix is what you manipulate, what you change. It's your independent variable, so what you change, what you're doing, what you're changing in the experiment, that's your independent variable. It's what you manipulate, and it goes on the x-axis. So whatever you change is on the x-axis, whatever you observe goes on the y-axis. Okay, so we're setting up our graph. What I vary, so what I change, will be on the x-axis. What I measured is on the y-axis. So here's my data table of my gum experiment. So I have my time, that's what I varied, and then I have the mass. So my time, whenever you have time, it's going to be on your x-axis. So time's going to go down here, and my mass is going to go right here. And when you're setting up your graph, if you don't have zero in your data set, you don't have to have zero on the graph. My time has zero, so I'll start with zero seconds right here, but my mass doesn't, so I'll probably just use whatever range I have. The range is the difference between the lowest data point and the highest data point. Basically, you do highest, highest data point minus lowest data point. So for my mass, I would do 2.7 minus 1.1. My range would be 1.6 grams. You want to use all the graph paper you can. It gives you a more complete picture and help you find patterns more easily. So you want to count your squares, divide the spread of your data by the number of squares. That'll give you a guideline for the increments. It would be easiest for me to bet 10 seconds per square. We're all about fixing our mistakes here. See, when you sometimes you're just given a piece of graph paper and you'll want to use all the squares on that. But if you're drawing it yourself, make it fit as much as possible, but make it also easy increments. You never want decimal points as your increments unless it's like 1.5 to 2.5, that kind of thing. If every one of these was like 8.1, that'd be ridiculous. You'd have all kinds of decimals and be a mess. I put tick marks for every 10 seconds, but I didn't put those in all the numbers in there because that would make my graph look really crowded and hard to read, but I put enough numbers that you know. Now I don't want to just write this, I want to write, I want to label this axis. So I'm going to write in time, and I need to say what units. So this is seconds, so I write S in parentheses. Your unit goes in parentheses. All right, my mass is going to be along my y-axis. And I always want to put my units in parentheses. Now again, my range is 1.6. How many squares do I have? Now if I divide that, I get 0 0.08888 blah blah blah. So I can round that up to about 0 0.1. 
So I can start my graph down here at 1.0 grams, and this is going to be 1.1. 2.0, So there's my mass in grams. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make dots that correlate with each pair number set. So zero, at zero seconds it was 2.7 grams. So at zero seconds I'm going to go 2.7 and draw a dot. At 30 seconds it was 2.2. So 30 is right here, so 20, 40, 30 is right here. So 2.2, which is right there, try to draw it on the cross there, at 60 seconds it was 1.5, so 60, at 90 it was 1.4, at 120 it was 1.2, at 150 it was 1.1, 1 .1. and 180 was 1.1. That gives you a sense of where my data points are but this is a line graph. If it was a scatter plot graph, you would make a best fit line, but this is a line graph. So I'm going to connect my dots because it shows change over time. So I have my line and that gives me an idea of what's happening. Kind of messed up there, but that's okay. So it dropped dramatically and then started evening out. The other thing my graph really needs is a title. But without a title, I just have a bunch of information. So I need to have a title. The title should tell you the relationship between the two factors and any other information about the experiment. This is a very analytical process. It's not like writing a book where you're trying to be creative. You want to have something that's very specific and tells exactly what this graph shows. Average mass So average mass of gum with 30 second intervals of chewing. I'm going to be able to change my preposition there. After 30 second intervals of chewing? Something like that. Either way, I want a title that tells me, tells the story of what's being represented in this graph. The title is like a story of everything we see in the graph. In labeling, don't skip around and don't only write the numbers for which you have data. That just messes the whole chart up. As you can see, graphing is super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Name that reference be called a scat or scatter no it can't line line again line 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 okay please blow quietly what did they do i don't know what they did graphs are super helpful graph helpful